Hey everybody! I don't know if you can see me from way back there, but it's Karen O'Leary again, and I'm here to talk about plein air painting. So this is my plein air outfit, and I thought I would show you what um, I generally wear and why. So um, I start off with um, a pair of pants, and these are cargo pants. They have lots of nice little pockets, and they also roll up. And if you get for if you get hot, I mean the whole key behind dressing for plein air is to have layers and have options. And so because as the day goes on, you'll go from being so hot that you're sweating to being freezing cold, and your feet are going to fall off. So layers is the key. So I'm starting with um, the pair of pants. It's fairly lightweight, and if it's a really cold day under 40 degrees or so, I, I'd put some um, some thin, like long underwear kind of uh, things underneath those, or some tights underneath the pants. And you can always take those off later if you get too hot. So again, it's having um, the different layers that you can adjust. And I don't know if you can see these, but I've got on hiking boots. And it's super important to be able to keep your feet dry and to uh, keep them warm, but also have um, some foot gear that is comfortable to stand in for hours at a time. So these are just some real nice hiking boots, and they're real heavy, and they're actually waterproof. So if I'm going through grass or anything like that, then my feet stay dry and warm the whole day, which, believe me, is very key to your comfort. So another thing I have for... For, uh, oh, and I have a very thick pair of um, hiking socks underneath that. So you might see these strange things. And these are just a pair of gardening gloves um, made out of like a fleece material that I've cut the fingertips off of so that um, I can paint and keep the rest of my hand warm and still be able to paint um, with those on. And those, those go right in my backpack so that I have them if I need them. And then I have a... Um, just a real warm vest and the vest is really nice because again it gives you flexibility your arms have a lot of motion um, one thing you'll notice with all my clothing is it's either gray or dark you don't want to wear very light clothing or very bright colored clothing because that will reflect actually onto your canvas and it will affect the way you're painting so you want to do that so underneath this vest that I, that I wear, I have just a sweatshirt, and it's a hoodie sweatshirt, so if the wind gets too much, I could pull that up over the top. You'll notice I have my warm hat on. I have a couple different hats, and this is just a fleece hat, and it's real warm, and, and it has a brim. What's really important on the hats that you use for plein air is that they have a brim that covers the back of your neck, as well as some uh, some shade from the sun for your eyes. So I use that hat in the morning when it's cold, and as the day progresses, I'll often switch to um, a straw hat, because that gives you a little, it, it's a little cooler and gives a little more sun coverage, but hats are super important. And I had one of my, one of my members of my website mentioned the other day, if you want to keep people away when you're out plein air painting, wear a funny looking hat, and if you want to um, have them come over and talk to you, then wear a normal hat. I'm not sure where this hat would fit in, but that's okay. So, just the sweatshirt, and that can come off later in the day too, when you get too hot. And then a gray t-shirt and my pants. I also bring along a thin uh, rain jacket. You can throw that over the whole thing. And that's how I get dressed for plein air. So the keys are lots of layers, um, neutral colored clothing, black or gray, and uh, warm, dry feet. Those are really key things and something to cover your head. So that's it for the closing section of this video. And we'll talk about supplies. Okay, we're back, and the first thing I want to talk about is what are we going to use to hold our canvas? What's our easel situation going to be out in the field? So this is what I generally use. It's, um, it's called a, a, a post-shot box, and there's 
a number of different types. This happens to be a Gorilla Painter box, but there's a lot of different types. And the idea is just that it's a box that's compact and folds up and that you can use as um, a place to put your canvas. And I'm going to show you that a little bit later, but just to see the big parts of it, it's got a drawer where you can hold your paints and your brushes and different supplies underneath there. And then this surface right here is used as a palette. And then you put your canvas right in here and you can actually store it that way on the way home. At least you can if you're painting with acrylics because your painting will be dry. So it folds all up real nicely and, um, and it will store in the backpack and I'll show you how that works in a minute as well. What's on the bottom of it here is a little gadget it just um, it just screws right into the bottom and this is what will attach it to your tripod and that's how you hold it up. So this is just a normal everyday tripod like you'd use for a camera. Um, it has legs that telescope up and down with these quick releases. It's made out of plastic with a little bit of metal on it so it's really lightweight. I found this one online fairly cheaply. Um, the top of it is a little, a little uh, connector portion here that you just take your bottom of your palette where you have the little bottom part of the connector. This came with the tripod, so this little thing I screwed at the bottom of the box came right with the tripod, and then you screw it on the bottom of your box, and there's a screw hole that's already in there, and then that goes straight onto attaches on. It takes a little bit to get used to how it attaches on, but, but you'll get it. And then it comes fairly quickly. Okay, so I've got this placed a little high just so you can see it, but this has an adjustable adjustment there so that you can adjust the angle of your box. And then you'll just open it up like this. And your canvas will go in there, and then you'll be painting right here. Like I said, this is a little higher. I would normally have it down a little bit, but I wanted you to be able to see it. So that's um, a real popular kind of a setup to use, and there's many different types of boxes. And um, as far as plein air painting, I think this one works really well for me. The largest size of a canvas that this can hold, though, is a 9 inch by 12 inch canvas, or you could put uh, a 12 by set, like an 11 by 14 or something if it were going in the portrait direction. So the other type of easel that I use if I want to go a little bigger is just your standard French easel. And um, these two are the same kind of concept. There are legs at the bottom that fold out and then this part folds up and that becomes your easel surface. And I'll show that to you a little later. I'll set up so you can see what it looks like. I just want to give you the, the big ideas here of what we're taking as far as large items go. I use a backpack to hold all of my supplies. I've tried a couple different types of backpacks. I actually prefer the type that unzip all the way around so the whole flap opens up so you can just lay it on the ground and open the whole thing up but um, the one I had like that got worn out so I'm trying this style and it's working pretty well it just has a large inner uh, inner compartment and that's where I take my my gorilla box and fold it up and I slide it right in there and I'll show you that later but you're going to need some sort of backpack I prefer a backpack over a rolling cart simply because I can put it on my back and then I can hike in as far as I need to go to paint. And uh, the key to it is you want to be able to take everything in one trip from the car. You don't want to have to do a bunch of trips. But a lot of people that I paint with use a rolling cart like, a, like those kind of grocery carts, shopping carts that have wheels on them or um, almost like a suitcase type thing with wheels on it. You can use those too. I just find that I really like to just be able to sling this over my shoulder and go. And then I don't have to worry about the surface underneath me, you know, whether or not I have a paved surface to roll it on. This is another thing that I use 
pretty much every time it's an umbrella. This particular brand is a Shade Buddy, but it just um, opens up real wide to give me some shade from the sun because one of the things you really need, you're either going to have to find a shady spot under a tree somewhere or you're going to have to provide your own shade. And bringing your own umbrella like this really gives you a lot more flexibility. What it does is it has a stake on the bottom of it with a little foot rest. So you just can put that right into the ground and use your foot to stomp on it. I also use my foot to hold it down in the ground when it gets windy. I can keep my foot just resting on it. That keeps it from blowing over. One good thing about a separate umbrella like this, um, they do make a lot of them that will clamp right to your easel, but if they catch the wind, they're just as likely to take your whole easel set up over and into the ground, which can be very frustrating. And that umbrella comes with a, a bag that it fits into, and it has a shoulder strap. So I can put my backpack on, and then I can have this in my hand as well, and it's part of my one trip from the car concept. Another large item that I will sometimes fit in my backpack, depending if I'm going to have a long day, is just a little foldable three-legged stool. Really useful, especially if you get tired or if you want to sit down and eat your lunch. It's great to have along. Sometimes I just keep it in the car and come back at lunchtime to get it to use there. So those are the, the large items I wanted to show you. And now we'll get on to some of the smaller supplies. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the supplies that we're going to take along with us on our planner painting adventure. The first thing we're going to need, of course, is going to be our acrylic paint. And I have it here in tubes. I would really pr prefer when I go planner painting to use all of the smaller size tubes. Um, they're lighter weight and easier to put in the box, so I would recommend that especially when you're starting out. I go through so much paint though that you know the value of the bigger tubes is better so I tend to get bigger tubes and then I just have more weight. But that's okay. So I take uh, all my tubes of paint and you guys all know what my usual palette is but we don't need to talk about that at this point. And let's just go right inside the push out box. So there's this little compartments and you can slide all your paints right in there, like that, okay? So, I put all the paints in, and then the other thing that I'm going to need to paint with is a water container, and I found this nifty little friend found it for me, actually. It's made out of plastic, and it's accordion like that, and um, so it will slide right inside my push out box. She found them online. I'm, I'm sure you could find them online as well. I'll look for some links and I'll add those at the end. But it's a great little water bottle. With acrylics, all we're using is water. We don't need any sort of mediums or thinners or anything. So that's great and really nice in the field. It makes life much simpler. And what I've done with it is I've just taken an old piece of elastic. This is elastic like you'd use for sewing and put around a waistband. And I've wrapped it around there and then I put a, um, a paper clip kind of thing on there. So then I can take that and I just attach it right to the side of, of my post shot box like that. There I have it. There's my water all set up and ready to go in an easy little lightweight collapsible container. And it's cheap. I'm, my husband calls it MacGyvering, but I tend to do a lot of makeshift things because I'm on a tight budget and I don't like to spend a lot of extra money that I don't have to on gadgets. So that goes right, fits right inside there. You can see that along with my paints and I just slide them in there and then I will take and put my brushes in. So I tend to try to take along short handled brushes. They're just easier to handle when you're outdoors. Um, but it's not, it's not really crucial, and the long-handled ones do fit inside the pochade box just fine. So those, and I also have a pencil here, and a palette knife. And 
The palette knife is important not just for painting. You might want to use it for painting, but I also use it to uh, scrape the paint and at the end of the session or get the paint out of paint containers. So those all go right in there like that along with the paint and the water holder and then that just closes right up. So you kind of have to adjust your paint tubes to get it to close but it will close, okay? So I take that and the way this uh, works the way it works is that the canvas, this is a 9 by 12 canvas, just slides right in the top behind these little metal holders that keep it in there. And so you can, I actually just put the canvas right in there before I leave for the day because it stays, it stays right in place, you see, and I can just shut the lid with the canvas in there. The other thing I do to prepare before I go out is I prepare my palette. The way that I prepare my palette for plein air is I'll put down um, a layer of paper towels, much like I do when I'm in the studio in my Stay Wet palette. I'll put down a layer of wet paper towel and then I'm going to use a uh, disposable palette paper on top of that. And they make those in the 9 by 12 size which, which fits right inside of the pochade box which is very handy. So generally before I go I'll, I'll prepare my palette a little ways in that I will put my paper towel in there and I'll wet it down slightly. The key to this is you can't get this really wet before you put it in your backpack and this is the voice of experience speaking. Your backpack will get wet because there's too much moisture in the paper towel and it seeps right out the edge of the box and into your backpack and then you get your back wet and it's a big mess. So I just put enough moisture on there to hold the paper towel down and to just get it stuck and I don't even put the palette paper in until I get there and then when I get there I will get it a little bit more wet and go from there. So that's another thing that we take along is paper towels for sure. And what I take with me for water is I just take a little container like this it's got a screw top on it and I put my clean water in here and at the bottom of, of um, my tripod that I use. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a hook right on the bottom of the tripod. And I hang that water bottle from it and it does two things. It keeps the water handy for me, but it also weights down the tripod a little more, which helps in windy situations. So that's going to go in my backpack and I'll show you how it all fits in my backpack in just a minute. We've got all the paints and then I take along an empty bottle and this empty bottle is to put the dirty paint water in so once I've been painting I've got the paint in my little collapsible cup I've been painting all day now it's time to go home I rinse the brushes as well as I can in the dirty water pour the dirty water in here it's got a nice sealable lid and then I can pour some more fresh water in and get the brushes a little bit cleaner before I go home you know you don't want that acrylic paint to dry in your brush and uh, when you get home you'll clean them out real well but you want to do the best you can in the field because you don't want to end up ruining your brushes. You also don't want to dump your paint water in your natural environment that you are. You don't want it to go into the stream or the river or kill the plants that are around in the beautiful area that you've been painting. So you want to pack that out. Don't dump your chemically water in, in the soil. Okay. So I also have these type of paint containers because you know I sometimes just don't have all tubes and you can take these two you just have to tuck them into places in your backpack and having all small tubes is really the way to go if you can. Okay so another thing you want to take is a trash bag for um, putting your dirty paper towels in. This is something that a pair of shoes came in I think. My husband's an avid cyclist and his new bicycle shoes came in this. But I liked it because it's it's a thick uh, plastic, really reusable. It's got a little ziplock on top. And then I just poked uh, a hole in it and that hangs on the same hook that my water bottle does. So you'll find all these little tricks and things as you go along. Uh, you can also use grocery plastic grocery bags that have the tie handles and then tie that either on your French easel or on, on your 
tripod, however that might work. But you do want to take something along to capture all those dirty paper towels. Again, you want to be sure to pack everything out with you when you go. All right, so another key thing for me to take along in the way I do plein air painting is my camera. So I'll have my backpack on, I'll have my umbrella in my hand, and I'll have this around my neck, and that way I can take photos of my scene. Um, we'll talk about that more. I actually use it to help me compose what I'm going to paint, but I also take photos of the scene to bring back for studio paintings. So I take the camera along, and my camera runs on batteries, so I always take an extra set of batteries along with me. Again, voice of experience. Just some other uh, comfort items and things that you're going to want to remember to take with you is um, I'll always take a snack, a little snack to take with you in case you're starving and you're just at the perfect spot and you're totally inspired and you don't want to stop to go back to the car to get lunch. I'll take a granola bar or something and water. You want to be sure to bring yourself fresh drinking water. Super critical. And then of course sunscreen. There's always the day you go out and it's cloudy and you think oh my gosh it's the sun's never going to come out and it does and then you get a sunburn and it's miserable or you roll your pants leg up and you don't realize you're standing with the your calf in the sun and you get sunburned. So I always bring some, I like this little kind of sunscreen, it's just a roll on, it's very small and light so it's useful to have. And some chapstick, so you know just creature comforts. And speaking of creature comforts, you want to take along some Kleenex, both for your nose and for the times when the porta potty is not well stocked. If you have a porta potty, if you're lucky enough to have a porta potty. Okay, so I'm looking around to see if I missed anything. I don't think so. That's my basic supplies of what I take planner painting. And now I'm going to put them all in the backpack and show you how that works. Okay? Okay, so real quickly I want to show you how I prepare my palette when I'm going out. And here's my paper towel. I've just used a layer of paper towel on my on my uh, box here and what I do is just you could either cut it to fit or fold it and I usually just fold the edges in like this turn them over so that they're not in the way or cause lumps underneath my paper so then I have a layer of paper towels that fits nicely in there and I just take my spray bottle when I'm at home in the studio and dampen it just a little bit and what that does is get it to get started so you don't have to use quite so much water when you're out in the field um, but you get it started and cut down on your prep time when you're out there as well so I'm just stretching it out a little bit to get the the wrinkles out of it so that there aren't wrinkles underneath my paper so that's the way that goes and then once I get out in the field I'll use my water bottle that I took along and I will pour a little bit on there and get it real wet before I put my paper. One other thing that I neglected to show you supply-wise is this little spritzer bottle which I use in the studio too but it really is critical to your supplies out in the field because you're going to use this all day long to spritz down your paint and try to uh, counteract the drying effect of the wind and, and the fresh air. So once I'm out in the field, I will go ahead and put my disposable palette paper right on top of that, much like I do in the studio with my Stay Wet palette. But I generally won't put this on yet until I get out in the field so that I can moisten this down a little bit more. Remember, you don't want to get it too wet before you go out or you'll have a leaky backpack. Okay, so we've got that set. Now we're going to load up our backpack. Okay, here I am all loaded up. Here's my backpack. Got my hat on. Don't have my jacket on because it's later in the day. It got warm. So I got my funny hat on to keep bystanders away. Got my umbrella all packed in its own little container. Put that down here for a sec. Got my camera around my neck ready to take pictures. And then I got my backpack. 
Okay, so here's my backpack all loaded up and ready to go. And inside of the top part, I've got my paper towels on top and my empty water bottle for my dirty water. I've got my tripod slid in the side. I've got extra large paint containers that I might need slid in beside my push on box. I've got my tripod that's all folded up. It has these easy uh, fold unfold little tabs on it that make it easy to deal with. And then inside that is my pochade box. Just slid right down in. And un underneath the pochade box on the bottom, I put that plastic garbage bag. Helps with water in case there's any water leakage too. This backpack has this cute little front container. And in that, I have my palette paper and a second canvas for the second painting of the day. And that all closes down. And it has a drawstring on the top, and then a, a flap that comes over. And this is where I keep all of my personal items like chapstick and my food bar and my sunscreen. And one other thing that I forgot to mention that I always take with me, it's kind of a strange container, but this is one of those plastic travel soap boxes. And I use that to take um, business cards in. As you get to be painting more, you'll oftentimes have somebody come up to you and, and talk to you while you're painting and want to know who you are and if you sell anything. So I always keep these business cards. I like this soapbox because it's hard and it keeps them from being um, scrunched up. But I also keep in here is, I don't know if you've seen these little things, it's called a square and you can put it on your cell phone and you can actually take a credit card transaction right on your cell phone. And I've actually had that happen where I'm out painting and somebody wants to buy the painting and I can just put that on my credit card and sell it to them on the spot because it's acrylics and it will be dry already. So anyway, those I keep in this little part of the, of the thing and over on the side I keep my tiny spray bottle in one which I don't see right now and my large water bottle in another and of course every backpack is going to be different. You'll just find that the best thing to do is to figure out a place for every item. That way, the worst thing that happens is you get out there and you forgot one thing. You forgot your water, or you forgot your spray bottle, or you forgot one item. And if you have your setup such that you know where everything goes, if there's a blank space, you know you've forgotten something. So that's really helpful that way. In my side pocket, I keep my batteries and my Kleenex and usually my cell phone if I don't have it in one of the pockets of my of my cargo pants. So that's all set. I've got my umbrella in its container over my shoulder. I've got my hat. i got my camera. I'm ready to go. Okay, one more thing I wanted to show you was how to set up one of these. This is called a French easel. And um, like I said, I use this when I want to paint something larger than a 9 by 12. And I know a lot of you out there probably got a French easel first. I, I know this was my first plenary easel. They're a little bit heavier. They're a little bit bulkier. So that's why I went to the Gorilla Box. But these are great too. They also come with a, a strap that you can have on there that you can carry it over your shoulder. Or you can fit these into a backpack as well if you have a big enough backpack. But I wanted to show you how to set it up just so you know how if you're using one. The first thing I do is turn it upside down. The legs are on the bottom of it and they're all folded up. So these the legs pop out. It's easier to do if you just set it on its face on the ground. It's easier to set the legs up. So they pop up and they've all got these little wing nuts. This, and you just screw, tighten those up like that all the way around. And then they have a little uh, thing that unscrews there and the legs come out. Go ahead and extend them all the way up. You can always adjust them down later, but you want to at least get them all even when you start. So that just pops out. Sometimes these are a little stiff when they're new, so um, both put, taking them in and putting them out, just give them a good pop, or from to take it out, give it a good pop that way. And make sure when you put it away, you're 
wing nuts here are loose enough so that they have a area to move back and forth and you can pop them out easily. So you want to be sure and get these tightened down um, or else your, your whole setup will be wobbly. So give them a good tighten and straighten them out. Lengthen out the legs. And then the rest of the, um, the third leg is down here in this compartment. You're just going to pull it up. It's got kind of a metal little ball and uh, groove that it rests in. So you sometimes have to give it a good jerk. But you jerk that thing up. Open it all the way up. It folds out. It's got a little stopper there. And another wing nut to tighten up. And then another screw to open up the length of the leg. So make sure that's all tightened up before you turn it over. I'm just going to turn that up. Okay. Okay, so once you get your box turned back over, you're going to go ahead and open it up. There's two little latches on the back of it that you're going to open up and then you're going to lift this part right up. You can see it just opens it right up. There's little screw uh, screws on the side here that you loosen or tighten, and that will help you fix it in the position that you want to paint from. So it'll be nice and tight there. Okay, and then where you have your canvas, let's put a canvas on there. This is kind of a small canvas, but you get the idea. So from here, there are more little screw latches on the side, and then you raise your canvas up to uh, where you want it to be to paint from, depending on how tall you are, whether you're sitting on a chair, heaven forbid. <laughs> so anyway, you raise that up, and then this part too raises or lowers, so you can clamp it right, your canvas right in there, and then there's uh, also a screw in the back that you screw that down and tighten it up. There's, one thing about, especially when you have a large uh, canvas and you're painting outdoors, it tends to become a sail and the wind will catch it and take your painting down the road. So if you clamp it in there good and solid, then you might take the whole, the whole easel and everything over, but at least you won't lose your painting and you have a chance to catch it a little easier. So you've got your painting all set up there. Then below it is the score that pulls out. And if you can see, that's where you, all of your paints will be stored. So your paints and your brushes will be in there. And they also come with um, a wooden palette that you can use if you're oil painting. What I do is I just take along my Stay Wet palette. If I'm going to use the Big Easel setup, I'll just take my Stay Wet palette and set it right under there. And the the same way I'll use my little water cup that I showed you in my other setup and that will clamp to the side of the drawer and then I will attach a garbage bag with my garbage paper towels on the other side. In the back you'll see that that then leaves you with some space whoops, where you can um, put your water bottles or your coffee cup or whatever you might want to put back there so it's really quite convenient. So these are handy little easels as well. Um, and like I say, that wasn't, this was my first easel that I used, planner painting, so it has a lot of painting history in this one. And um, the only reason I went to the smaller box was it was just smaller and lighter and easier to carry and easier to put in the backpack, but these certainly work uh, well too. So I hope that you got some good ideas today on how what supplies you're going to need for your back for your plein air painting adventure and your setup and just the the tips that I I can come up with to tell you and next um, in the next video we're going to talk about doing a plein air painting itself and take you out onto a location and show you what I look for in a painting and how to paint outdoors okay so Really glad you joined me today, and we'll talk to you soon.